We actually started on the Mac uh, with LabVIEW. So LabVIEW's been on the Mac for about 21 or 22 years. And uh, people occasionally will come up to us and say, I didn't know you had LabVIEW on the Mac. So we're still trying to do a job of you know, evangelizing LabVIEW on the Mac as well as you know, it's multi-platform, so it works on Linux and, and Windows as well. And the idea is that if you prefer a Mac, you can use a Mac and still use Lab. If they're, uh, if they're a scientist, there's a lot of chemistry labs, physics labs that are completely around working on the Mac platform. So they've got you know, rooms full of Mac machines, they've got X serves backing up all their data. And then there's, you know, in, in uh, engineering, situations, most of the time they're still on Windows, but they may be looking for you know, a reason or a way to move this to a Mac, whether it's for you know, stability, uh, virus protection, uh, they just like the Mac, they think it's cool, so you know, there's a lot of uh, reasons and uh, there's probably not one scenario that's, that's the same, but generally, you know, if you're walking around in Mac world, you're probably a fan of the Mac, and if you could, you would use a Mac computer. That, that, that question actually came up today. So what they would want to do is take a look at the application they're migrating and first evaluate whether or not there's any Windows-only functionality that's part of it. So if they've used ActiveX or some other Windows-only technology, then they would have to obviously go in and make that change to something that's, that is supported on the Mac. But other than that, really what they can do is just bring the BI over, open it up, and look at the run arrow and just see what that list of, of things that it's complaining about is. Maybe it's stuff that's really easy to resolve because 95% of what's in LabVIEW is, is cross-platform completely. So there's very minor differences. A lot of the differences would be on the hardware side in terms of hardware support. So if they've got an application that was running using uh, some bus that, that's no longer even found on the Mac and it was supported on their Windows machine, then obviously they're going to have to, you know, it's an ISA board they're using, probably not going to work on the Mac. They'd have to get a, a USB board or PCI Express or something else like that. We're showing actually a few different things here that you're, you're welcome to take a look at. We've got uh, USB data acquisition where we've got ranging from you know, 10 kilo samples a second to 1.25 mega samples a second. In fact, we're showing off uh, a new product which is a, a USB M series where you've got an integrated connector block with the M series device. You've got an all-in-one USB data acquisition system. So the connections we've got on here are uh, analog input. You've got, in this case, 16 analog input samples, four analog output, a bunch of digital and I.O including you know, some of it's BNC, some of it's uh, screw terminal. And then we've also got uh, other USB data acquisition devices that are more low cost. And then one of the things we're showing at the show is actually controlling PXI from a Mac Pro. So we've got a Mixi board that makes the Mac system think that all of these PXI boards, these M-series boards, are actually plugged into the PCI Express backplane that's on this computer. So in this case, you could have you know, an eight channel or 16 channel PXI system fully decked out with data acquisition boards and have you know, 300 samples coming into a Mac Pro and only use one of your PCI Express slots. So it's a nice setup depending on what your system needs are. If you need something that's a little more rugged or high channel count. Yeah, sure. The overall, I'd say, as I, I mentioned before, it's probably 95% the same. Uh, the main differences are within Windows, you're going to have access to things like ActiveX, um, OPC, which is based on you know a, a Microsoft technology. Whereas on the Mac, there's some other functions that you can use that allow you to access things like uh, the the command terminal or to run Mac scripts or to invoke uh, what are called Apple events. So there's just some different functionality that's that's OS specific that you can use depending on if you're on Windows or Mac or Linux. But other than that, you know, if you go through the palettes, you're using uh, you know, the, the vast majority of the functions, they're exactly the same. Absolutely, so they can, uh, they can do that quite a, in, in a quite a few ways now. They can either run uh, VMware and actually have kind of a, a virtual machine that's running Windows on with LabVIEW on it. They could do that. Or they could do something like uh, having boot camp where they actually boot the entire computer into Windows and they're, they're actually natively running Windows, you know, they're logged into Windows on their machine. And from there, you know, same process, they have LabVIEW installed, they, they develop everything and then they may want to end up using the Mac as 
you know, uh, an HMI or some kind of SCADA system where they just monitor their, their system at the end of the day once it's deployed to a Windows machine, but uh, there's, there's quite a few options. Um, the, the challenge there would be if they're trying to use something like a virtual machine, they may not have access to their hardware, but if it's something like uh, boot camp where you're actually booting into Windows, then you should have that same access to, to USB, to PCI, to FireWire that you would get through a regular Windows machine that you buy from, from Dell or somebody else. So it depends a little bit on which approach you take, but it, there should be options for doing that. Uh, that's a good question, and, and I think it's, I'm confident in saying we are fully committed to supporting the Mac because, you know, internally we're we're actually big fans of the Mac. Where our our uh, co-founder Jeff Kadoski walks around with the Mac every day as he does his job. So uh, you'll find people in every every aspect of our company that are using Macs, and at the same time, you know, we're committed to a multi-platform approach. We're not going to tie ourselves to a single operating system, a single bus, a single you know, way of doing things. So we want to provide as much flexibility as we can so that end users can you know, put together a system that they feel comfortable with. And we actually work pretty closely with Apple. They, they give us, or let us borrow, I should say, the latest equipment, you know, eight core machines when they come out so that we can have those set up in R&D and in our AE department so that as issues come up, we have a, a way of going in and you know, testing on the latest and greatest, whether it's the hardware or the operating system. So, you know, we're, we're as committed to supporting Mac users as we are to Windows, Linux, or, or anybody else. This is actually a four-core machine. This is what the loaner pool had available. But uh, even a four-core machine is pretty powerful. And, you know, the, the amazing thing is this, this to them is an old technology, you know, a four-core desktop, whereas it's hard to find, you know, four-cores, eight-cores commercially in other PC vendors.